Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. <coughs> I'm here because I want to improve my English. Hopefully, that is the same case with you. The idea is to sit there every day and uh, learn a few words at a time every day and in, and in the process expand our vocabulary and improve our English. The word that I'm going to start out with today is demarcate. D Mar Kate. The noun, of course, would be demarcation. It simply means to set boundaries. That's all, to set boundaries. That's all there was, because I've used this word in the past in the lectures, and uh, I figured I'll cover it formally. So, for example, if you have some work here, like I just did here, because I want, uh, I'm about to start a new word here. So this is, I just demarcated it, uh, demarcation. This, this is the demarcation, so that we can keep the, this, that word separate from the next word that I'm about to start. The next word is D. Delineate, delineate is not the same as demarcation. To delineate something means to to draw or trace the outline of something. It also means to to sketch or delineate could also mean to actually describe something to describe something in something in words or by gestures or even pictorially by picture and that's that is to delineate something, to delineate an event, to delineate a, a story. Uh, it's, uh, it means to describe it, either in words, as I said, or in gestures, or through pictures, or to scratch, or to sketch something, to sketch something, to draw something, to trace an outline of something, which is not, which has nothing, nothing to do with demarcation. Demarcation simply means to put a boundary around something. That's what it is. Sometimes two nation. Uh, two nations uh, to contiguousness and that is that's a good word actually that's uh, it came out of nowhere contiguous let's see how to spell it I know these words but I'm not quite sure about the spellings of the word so we'll look it up contiguous to contiguousness usually not usually sometimes rather have a demarcation dispute demarcation dispute because they do not agree on the boundaries of their countries and they sometimes they go even they even go to war for that. There you go. Here's the word. And I'm going to demark it. Put a boundary around it. Uh, I put them on the. I, I put these words that crop up out of nowhere on the side so that I remember to cover them in the future. So somewhere in the future date. We will talk about this word formally, but it's contiguous simply means adjoining, touching each other. For example, for example, Connecticut where I live and New York, they're contiguous state. But Connecticut and Alaska are not contiguous state because, well, you get the idea. It just means to be touching each other, that's all. And hence, people talk about the 48 contiguous states. And then, of course, there's Hawaii and Alaska, which are, which are not touching any other state. So contiguous simply means to touch something physically. So what I was saying is that sometimes uh, nations go to war with each other. Usually they're contiguous nations because the, what I'm trying to describe here is that the purpose of the war is, uh, is a demarcation dispute. 
and in order to have a demarcation dispute, I suppose they would have to touch each other somehow. I, not, I guess that they don't have to, but th that's what it is, a demarcation dispute, because they're touching each other, and do not, they do not agree where, the, where one country ends and where the other one begins. Oh, this country might think that uh, all of this is his, and this country might think all of this is his. So they, they go to war for it, and those are called demarcation disputes. Anyway, that was it. Let's move on then. The next word I want to talk about is actually, oh, I shouldn't have erased that part because now I won't remember to write it down later on. Of course, I can always go and watch this video and it will be there, but I'm lazy. Contiguous is the word. The next word I want to talk about is actually a very, very short word, but I wanted to cover it. The word is fret. Again, very simple pronunciation, nothing to it, no tricks to it. It's a verb. What does it mean to fret? To fret means to be annoyed, to be irritated, to be bothered. To be to feel to feel uneasy. If someone tells you don't fret, or the time tell you is that don't feel uneasy, don't feel, don't be waxed, to, to be waxed, to be agitated. To be agitated, to be disturbed. If you feel if you if you get disturbed by something, if someone says something which annoys you, which waxes you, which makes you feel uneasy, uh, somebody might tell you, though your friend might say, don't don't fret over it, don't fret over it, just ignore it. What they're trying to tell you is that don't feel uneasy about it, don't feel disturbed by it, don't feel troubled by it. Just ignore it. Here's this word in the capital letter. Let's talk about that word. Next, right up here. Wax. What does it mean? Well, I'm not going to rewrite everything. Wax means exactly what 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 it says. All of these words here. Wax means to be to to feel uneasy, to to be bothered by something, to be irritated by something, to be annoyed by something, to be agitated by something, to be disturbed by something. Wax and fret and all of these words are synonyms. That's all. The noun of wax would be the noun of wax would be. Let's put it up here. This. Uh, the noun would be vexation. Vexation. Vexation simply means an annoyance, an annoyance, an irritation, a, a bother, an uneasiness, uh, agitation, a disturbance. You get the idea. Something that causes disturbance, something that causes agitation, something that causes uneasiness, uh, something that causes uh, some bother, irritation, annoyance, is, is said to cause vexation. And anything that causes vexation is said to be vexatious. Vexatious, which is an adjective. Annoyance. That's all. The next word I want to talk about is also a very, very short word, but I want to talk about it. That's it. I'm done. The, the, we're done with this word. That's what it is. Fret. To be annoyed. To be irritated. To be bothered. To be. To be. To feel uneasy about something. To be vexed by something. To be agitated by something. To be disturbed by something. The noun would be, oh, I raised one more time. I'm going to actually write it down on my list here so that I don't have to keep worrying about it. The word was contiguous. Like I said, in the future, well, I'll cover it formally. The next word I want to talk about is prod. Again, it's pronounced exactly the same way it's written. 
root trick to it. It is a verb. What does it mean to prod? Well, prod has two meanings. It has a literal meaning. Literally, it means something. And it has a metaphorical meaning. Literally, it means, this is a literal meaning. Literally, it means to poke an animal with a pointed instrument. Doesn't doesn't really have to be a pointed instrument. It could be a stick. Let me give you. Let me try to make you understand what we what we're talking about here. Back, back in the old days, when people rode horse and horse and buggy, uh, well, they didn't, didn't ride horse and buggy. Back in the old days, when they had horse and buggy, uh, to make the horse go faster, or if you're riding the horse, to make the horse go faster, people usually had a stick in their hand, and they would poke the stick in the horse's rib or some parts of the horse. I don't know where. Uh, to to to. Uh, they would stick that thing to, uh, in, in horse's body, uh, which will be uh, which will cause the horse to pick up the speed. That process of poking the horse or any animal for that matter with a pointed instrument is called prodding. That is the literal meaning of the word. Metaphorically, it simply means if if you prod somebody, what you what you tell what what you're doing actually is to cause someone. So this is metaphorical meaning. to cause someone to get going. I'm putting in a very colloquial uh, terms here to get, to, to, to get them to get going, to get up your uh, rear end and do something. And if you, if, you, if you give them that extra nudge that they needed, that extra push that they needed in order to get going, that process is called prodding. To give someone to give someone, someone, the extra push they need to get them going. That's called prodding. Finally, I want to talk about a pair of words. Let's say that was the end of it. I need to raise it now. To give someone, to give someone, as O means someone, the extra push they need to get them going. And that is called prodding. Metaphorically, that is. You're, you're causing them to do whatever it is that they need to do there. Literally, literally it means actually to pick up some stick and, and, and poke them in their, in their, in their body to, to give them a cue that they need to do something. And that's what we used to do with the animals. Finally, I want to talk about two words. Can you tell me the difference between these two words? Underscore and underline. Again, I covered these words because sometimes, not always, but once in a while I come across some people who think, for some strange reason, they think that underscore means to score less than desired level. The word means no such thing. It has nothing to do with scoring. The word underscore comes from the old days when we had typewriters and in the typewriter the key that people used to hit to underline the word that key was called underscore. So therefore underscore means to underline. Underline and underscores are synonyms. It means to, to emphasize, to highlight, to, what else did I put down there? To bring to attention, to bring to attention. And there's another word that just comes to my mind, which is not there. I'm going to have to put it on the side because I will have to cover it in the future. It means to accentuate. And again, I do not know how to spell it. They just come out of nowhere, and I'm not a very good speller. When it comes to spelling, I feel pretty timorous, diffident. We'll, I'll talk about these two words in a second. The word was accentuate. Accentuate. There you go.
to stress. To underscore a point, to underscore a point is to stress that point, to accentuate that point, to highlight that point, to, to bring that point to, to attention, uh, to, to emphasize it, which is same as to underline something. If you're underlining something, that means you're underscoring it, you're highlighting it, you're accentuating it. That's what accentuate means. Accentuate means all of these things here, actually. And, what I was, and, the, and these two words came out of nowhere, so did this one, actually. Is because as I was trying to figure out of, uh, as I was trying to figure out how to write the word accentuate, I had to pick up this dictionary and look up the to make sure that I, I know how to spell. Because when it comes to spelling, I'm not very confident. I, I feel very timorous. Timorous means to feel timid. Similarly, the word diffident. Diffident is an interesting word. I'm digressing here big time because I had no intention of covering these two words. Diffident is an interesting word because most people know what this word means. Obviously. Confident, which is a very simple word, but you ask them to, to give you the antonym of it and they will have trouble. They cannot come up with the antonym of confident. Confident comes has the prefix con, C-O-N, which means with. And diffident has the prefix D-I-F, which means without. Confident literally means with self-assurance. Diffident is the antonym, which literally means without. You see this symbol here, W, without self-assurance. Without self-assurance means you're shy, you're not confident, you're, you're timorous, you're timid. You're timid, you're shy, you're not, uh, not self-assured. So when it comes to spellings of the word, sometimes I feel timorous, sometimes I feel diffident. I have to check the spelling to make sure that I spell it correctly because I'm always paranoid that I may misspell the word. So I always double check it, that's all. That was it for today. As a matter of fact, we got a whole, whole bunch of bonus points also here. The word accentuate is a good word. Timorous, diffident. I will cover all of these words in the future, even though you already know what they mean. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? There was something else I, want, I was going to say. Uh, accentuate, something that I... I forget now. There were a couple of other words that I covered uh, in the in the past, and I was going to tell you to uh, look up a certain video to learn those words, but I, I I forget now. I can't think of it. So that's it. That was the end of today uh, today's lesson. Every day, as I said, uh, we learned few words here and there. These words come out of nowhere. There is no rhythm or logic, rhythm or rhyme to it. There is no logic to it. There is no confluence to it. And if you do not know the word confluence. Look up yesterday's video, just type in Kashmani prep dash vocab dash day 11 and you will learn the word confluence. Uh, there is no central idea, there is no central theme, they just come out of nowhere and I have been making lists of them because I wanted to learn them formally so that uh, I feel a little confident using these words myself in, our, in, 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 in my speech, in my writing, in my, and in, if I come across these words in my reading, I, I want to be able to know the precise meanings of the word which is why I'm doing the videos. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for the GRE, the GMAT, the SAT and the TOEFL. Go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Let me know what you need help with and I'll be more than happy to work with you. You can also go to kashmaniprep.com and send me an email from there. That's the website address of the business, kashmaniprep.com. Alright, thanks.